Yeah, so um, well, uh, welcome. This is Jorge Barraza, and we're in the middle of a conversation about um, operating systems and Microsoft and Windows Millennial Edition. Um, so, so, so um, sorry, sorry, continue. Oh, and this is Joseph Dewey, uh, and we're in the middle of a <laughs> now about um, about the Windows Millennial Edition and how it and and how it's um... so. So, so the thing that the thing that really bugs me about Microsoft is that, um, and and I went to I went to some like Microsoft conference, and they they told me like their philosophy, which which I just don't like. Um, their philosophy is that since Microsoft has a whole bunch of products, that if if the customers like keep using more and more and more Microsoft products, then then there's well, it's obviously good for Microsoft, but I don't know why it's like good for anyone besides Microsoft. But 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 that's um, that's their strategy is saying, oh well, you, you use some Microsoft products, but why not use all the Microsoft products? Um, Isn't and, that what Google? And, well, uh, what's that? Isn't that what Google does as well? Oh yeah, and and um, actually, I, I I used to love Google, but now I'm uh, uh, now I'm in kind of like a bitter phase towards Google. Um, you, you you remember Tron, like the old Tron? Yeah. And and so and, and so there's two scenes in it. Um, one, um at um at the beginning, uh, um where where the the CEO of the corporation that made the master control program, um. Uh, um, the um, he, um, he, um, he goes into the room and there's a cons uh, there, there's a console and the master control programs talking um, talking to him and, and, and talking about how he how the how the AI has basically like taken over a whole bunch of companies and and um, and the uh, and the CEO kind of says uh, well should we really be doing this and and the master control program basically says hey well I'm the one calling the shots and I'm telling you what to do like like he he's this he's the CEO of the company so um, so 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 I've been um, I've been thinking about how like like parts um, parts of Google are really uh, parts of Google they control the AI really well but then other parts of Google like Google Maps, um, the one I'm really familiar with, um, they're just letting the AI run amok. And and also um, also kind of AdWords is that way too. Um, like go um, go onto the AdWords app and look at the recent reviews. Um, so so AdWords um, or, or no, it's not AdWords. It's it's Google Ads. It's it's where where you pay to um, you, um, you pay Google for advertising, which which is where they get like 99% of the revenue. So, so in the, uh, in that in, in that uh, they have uh, their app is like 4.4 4.4 out of five stars. But if you scroll through the recent reviews, like almost nobody has almost nobody has rated it five stars. So they're like one star, one star, two star, one star, one star, three star, one star, one star, one star. One star. So, um, so, uh, so, so anyway, that's um, that's my current theory is that. They're basically saying, "Hey, well, AI is a lot better than us at predicting like sales and everything. So why not just have AI just completely run our um, ads department?" Um, so and are you anti AI or? Well, um, a... <laughs> well, uh, well, it's um, so 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 the thing about uh, the thing about Google uh, the thing about Google Maps that kind of pisses me off is um so so you know how i um you, you know how i was like a top um google maps person and they invited me to san francisco and and i spent i spent a lot of time like walking um uh, walking around um uh, especially especially like bangkok uh, taking taking pictures of various businesses uploading them to google maps and then especially when i went uh, um to other countries um because i wanted um, i wanted to be like um like that my Google Maps profile was kind of like complete, like like at, at every airport I would go to um, uh, like, like walk around like every shop in the airport taking um, taking photos. I'd be like, oh, oh, damn, my my um, I only have like a two and a half hour layover. I'm not going to be able to take every single photo of in, in this airport and, and airports. Um, airports are kind of like Google Maps gold for someone that's like trying to find what, what, what well, um, the, um, the thing about um, the thing for someone that's like a top contributor, top contributor in Google Maps is what um, what you want is 
a really popular business listing that doesn't have any photos. And and then in the um, in the airport, because nobody actually thinks of, hey, well, let me take a picture of Cinnabon and upload it to Google Maps. Um, like like if you um, if you go to Cinnabon like outside of the airport, then you might do that. But like in the airport, like nobody is actually thinking, hey, well, um, is is Cinnabon in the airport on Google Maps? Well, well except for me. And so like. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, so anyway, I'm, I, I, I forgot where I'm going with, uh, with, with this story besides, uh, uh, besides, I think I was just, um, trying to establish that, yeah, I know a lot about Google maps and AI, like at what point is, is AI yeah, too? Yeah. And so, um, and so, so, so I, um, I spent a lot, I spent a lot of time, um, and, and I kept thinking, oh, this is really interesting because, uh, because Google puts um, Google has uh, um, Google Maps has just a ton of AI um, uh, behind the scenes and it it was really interesting because as I was contributing I was always thinking oh well what's uh, what, uh, what's the AI doing with this because it's not it, it's not like a human doing stuff like I'm, I'm completely interacting with a computer it's kind of like playing um, playing chess with a computer except for like um, 20 levels above that um, and oh, and so, so I always like to um, improve things and make things better. And so I kept um, and and I thought, well, um, Google Maps has some really really rough edges, and they probably want to improve their applications. So, so um, so 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 I kept like making a whole bunch of suggestions, like oh well, well here's a bug. If you do this and if you do this, then this is broken. And and I kept reporting like. All of these bugs in uh, all these bugs in Google Maps, and I realized after like two and a half years of very very heavy contributions that they fixed zero of the bugs that I reported. And <laughs> and, and at first I thought, oh well, yeah, um, they're um, they're busy. They're um, don't they know um, who I am? You're like <laughs> I'm yeah, Joseph and, Dude from Bangkok. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I realized that. That um, that's um, I, I realize that that the AI is kind of well, well they're not actually um, they're not actually trying to improve Google Maps. What they're trying um, what 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 they're trying to do um, uh, because you know how uh, you know how the core of machine learning is um, like like you know how um, th th there were some news articles like they found uh, they found a um, or, or, or um, they fed um, uh, they fed the machine learning like seven million pictures of cats, and then they um, and then they uh, did uh, did some stuff, and now like um, computers can recognize cats. So, so, so the whole thing about that is that you need a whole bunch of data, and the thing that uh, the thing that AI wants right now, like like kind of in in, in Tron, then um, in Tron, then like AI was just trying to take over everything. Um, but the AI of today, what what AI wants is more data because the more data that AI has, then the more it can analyze stuff better. And so I realized that so, so Google Maps um, has updates like like Google Maps updates about as much as the Chrome application. Like every, uh, um, I don't think on a, I don't think on as rigid the schedule as that, but but they're updating all the time and adding new stuff all the time. But the stuff they're adding isn't making it better. The stuff they're adding is almost exclusively trying to get more content from just random people. So so at first I uh, at first I was kind of mad like um, with uh, with some of the changes because um, because I. Because I thought, oh well, it's basically like tricking you into accidentally uploading your photos, and and I realized, oh well, that uh, that totally makes sense from the um, AI wants more data and um, just like like that's that's the whole thing about Google Maps is it's just trying to get you to get data, and, and, and it doesn't actually matter if it's good or not because um, because Google's algorithms are smart enough to parse and say, oh, well, this, this isn't actually a view of the restaurant. This is a view of Jorge's dog. Um, but, um, but these other, uh, these other, uh, these other 80% of the photos are the, are, the, are the restaurant. So I'll parse those and figure everything out. And, 
that kind of thing. So, um, so, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the crux of why I'm mad at Google Maps because they've let AI run amok and they're basically uh, um, they're basically like slaves to this machine that's saying, "Hey, give me more, give me more. I need I I need more data. Um, I only have." Um, I only have uh, 57 um, um, tera, whatever of, of uh, or, or, or um, uh, um, I only have uh, 57 billion photos. I need uh, um, I need at least um, 27 trillion photos to be able to be 99.9% um, accurate. And so I wonder, um, what's the alternative then? Um, yeah, because um, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start using Apple Maps. Um. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> MapQuest. I saw a picture of MapQuest here. I'm like, oh my god, that was a thing. I forgot about MapQuest. Yeah, that was uh, that was like the number one map um, for for quite a while. Yeah, it's like oh gosh, dude. It, it's weird. Like looking back. Uh, I was recently watching like a string of like '90s commercials. Uh, they're available on YouTube, you know. Uh -huh. And there was like a picture of a map, someone using a computer with MapQuest on it. And I'm like, man, things have changed so much so fast that we don't even notice how much they've changed, right? Yeah. We're almost yeah. being we're almost being lulled into this, um, into participating, right? Uh, like somebody said, like if the product is free, then you're the product, right? Kind of thing. But. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, it's it's really interesting. So, 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 what's your uh, what, uh, what's your take on Google? Because because you've um, uh, so, so so you were uh, you were way gung ho Google before um, uh, before I ever like use use Google, and you kept uh, you kept telling me, hey Joseph, you have to uh, you have to use Google. Just uh, and, and this was back in the Google search days. Uh, when uh, when I was still using uh, Al uh, Alta Vista or something like that. Oh um, man! Oh gee, <laughs> crazy. Uh, yeah, you know, it's like I think when I said you know being lulled into it, I think I'm I'm part of that. You know, like I have you know Android phone, Chromebook, Gmail at work and personal. It's all integrated, so I get my work emails on my phone and um, you know like travel times at the appropriate times when I'm gonna go somewhere. And so I'm like, at some point it's information overload kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just so connected that I don't remember what it's like to not be connected that way. Like having to just figure things out on your own instead of being, you know, it's funny, it does affect your behavior, right? It kind of, it's definitely directing you. Um, and it's it's that long play is that I think it's that chess, like you said, like at 20 levels above of like, you know, if we show an image now in three months, they're likely to click and buy this. <laughs> like, Whoa, but they do it. I don't know. It's nuts. Like every time still do they have Amazon uh, delivery trucks out there? Um, actually, um, there's no uh, there's no Amazon in Thailand. Um, wow. Uh, um, there, there are there are two like Amazon like um, or like things that are kind of similar to Amazon, but not um, not not actually like really similar to Amazon. Um, Lazada is the main one, and then and then Shopee is the other one, and then um, yeah yeah um, just basically basically two things. But when's the last time you've been in the states? Uh, what, uh, what's that? When was the last time you were in the states? Um, it was about a year and a half ago, I think. Okay. Did you see uh, any Amazon delivery trucks? Oh no, uh, no, no, no. So, so, so tell me about Amazon delivery. They're Are, everywhere they, now. So they're their own delivery company now, right? Uh -huh. um, oh yeah, yeah. I read about that, but I, um, I, I don't know about um, anything besides like an article I read like six months ago. No, it's wild. They're everywhere. So you see trucks with the Amazon smile on the side. Um, and, and so you order something early in the day and you can get it the same day. Um, in, in Salt Lake? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. 
Yeah, we have a major distribution center here in near Salt Lake. Um, and so it's just nuts. And even when you order something from like, you know, that's coming from some other distribution center, um, I've had like, I've gotten updates like 11 a.m. that a package arrived in Las Vegas um, should arrive tonight, today by 9 p.m. And then some little, some like, uh, you know, basically like uh, someone in their personal vehicle will show up like at 8.30 at night and take out a box and leave it at my apartment. And it's like, whoa, dude, it's just crazy, the logistics, <laughs> you know, that, that goes into that. And so w w with the whole vaccine thing and people talking about like, how are we going to get this distributed? I'm like, why isn't Amazon handling this? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> they, could, they could tell you, you know, they could give you a 20 minute window in which that shot will be in your arm. I mean, like uh, you order it today and tomorrow between 11.45 and, and noon, yeah, you know, that'll, that'll be in your arm already. It's like, it's crazy. It's nuts. It's, it's still, I mean, and for, cause I remember you were so big on Amazon and I was like, I don't know. I still like going and getting something and, and there's still, I still prefer going and getting something, you know, but when it comes to the selection available and now that two days is usually the max you have to wait. I mean, and a lot of times it's next day or same day. It's like, oh, it's rough. But then do you, how do you, I mean, uh, there's also all the things about anti-Amazon, right? Like how much, I saw a great meme that said, um, Jeff Bezos um, could be Santa Claus for everybody, right? He knows where we live. He knows what we want. Jeff Bezos is deliberately choosing not to be Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> totally true but wow that's uh that's awesome is it <laughs> i don't know it's something else but yeah so how's uh how's life down there right now or up oh, there or... um yeah yeah and i'm um i'm not sure um i'm not sure if i'm up or down or or well i um latitude or longitude i think um, Salt Lake's like 40, around 45, 47 or something, and Thailand is 13. Of course you would know that, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so, 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 so it's pretty, it's pretty close to the, the equator. Um, the cool, the cool thing is uh, um, that the days are pretty much the same length all the time. So, um, so, so it, um, like like the sun uh, the sun rises around six a.m. and the sun sets around like six thirty a.m. like um, pretty much all the time throughout the year. I'm sure it's like a half an hour difference, um, but but it's not like um, and and no daylight saving time. No daylight savings. <laughs> yeah. Well, man. I mean, they they actually just passed a law in Utah that if enough states around us adopt save uh, staying on daylight savings permanently, that we'll do it too. Um, okay, so I think we need oh, like two um, to do it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because it's you. You know how it's here. Like, like right now, it's it's getting dark at five five thirty. Um, mm -hmm. the summer, it gets dark at nine p.m. You know, so it's like it's quite craziness. Just like, uh, so I'm excited. We're hitting, uh, you know, the equinox. So, or oh, what do you call it? Yeah, the winter solstice, right? That's what we're talking oh about. yeah, yeah. In in like a week, right? Yeah. So then our days start getting longer at that point. But like, oh, yeah. That's a that's a rough thing. Like having a yeah. And I uh, so so people in Thailand really um, really like it to be cold or like like, uh, like cool. Um, like like in all the shopping malls, um, it's just really really cold because they just crank the AC up. Um, just, just intense. Um, and then, and then like in, um, in my office, it's really cold too. And well, that's a draw, right? Uh, for malls, like people go to a cool place. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and a lot of Thai people really are excited about the snow because they've never actually seen snow before. And, um, and, and, and like, um, like, in in Utah and and, and in Idaho where I'm from, where I'm originally from, the um, the snow looks beautiful like 
one or two days a year and then the rest of the time it's just like all the like salt and like like it's black and gross and um Mud. Yep. so when i uh, when i think of snow that's uh, that's what i'm thinking of and when high people are thinking of snow they're thinking or they're thinking of like instagram photos and you should run a tour um, company and like uh you know make trips to utah during the winter <laughs> yeah and, and and they actually have a um i um i haven't ever um, been um, been there but i've um I, i've heard that, that somewhere in thailand there's like this snow amusement park or like like inside of inside of an amusement park there's this this snow room so you can go in and like experience fake snow um <laughs> Just uh, um, just because like nowhere in Thailand, um, I don't think anywhere in Thailand it snows like um, like like maybe in the north of Thailand it snowed like 50 years ago, but like in Bangkok. No ski resorts. It, yeah, absolutely none. Yeah, man, uh, curry and slopes. That would be the thing. So um, so so Thai um, Thai people are all, are are all like always ask me, oh, Joseph, um, do you miss um, do you miss home, especially for Christmas? Um, and I'm like, uh, no, it's too, it's too cold. It's too, um, and I hate, um, I hate driving on the, um, I hate driving on ice or like, um, um, just cause like, like that's my least favorite thing in the world. Cause, um, cause like no matter how good of a driver you are, then, um, uh, just nobody can drive, uh, nobody can drive safely more than like three miles an hour on, on ice. Um, uh, and, and, and sometimes just in, we just had our first like somewhat decent snow drop uh, like two days ago. And uh -huh. yeah, you know, and I'm driving careful, but you never know when you're going to be going down a slope, right? And you apply your brakes and nothing happens. And you're like, okay, I'm going to run to this intersection. <laughs> and so people see me sliding in. I'm like, oh. And, and actually by the, um, in the, um, by the condo, um, or uh, uh, by the condo I used to rent in Orem, um, at at the at like the Kmart shopping mall, um, I saw this uh, I saw this collision and it was um, it was just it was really really slow, um, but it it was really really slow and just painful to watch because it was like twenty seconds of of, of this giant truck just going, <laughs> and, and there was like nothing nothing that anyone could do about it and. <laughs> It's almost anticlimactic. You're like, oh wow, watch this. <laughs> yeah, like oh, okay, yeah, dude, that town. I remember. Oh man, our adventures walking around that neighborhood. What was that little bar that we used to go to? That was we used to go karaoke at. Oh, um, are are you talking about Kelly's? Kelly's. I don't even yeah. remember the name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so, so, so it's kind of um, the one, um, the one by my old house had, uh, it's a restaurant in front called Callie's and then a bar in back called Moe's. Yeah. Yeah. We got to the point where they kind of expected us to remember. Cause yeah. <laughs> I tell people about our karaoke adventures and people are like, really? I'm like, yeah, it was crazy. man." it's like, Joseph turned me on. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm going karaoke four or five times a week. It was nuts. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, so, so that was uh, that was really that was really really interesting because, um, because like like I'm 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 still surprised that I I'm the one that told you hey you uh, you'll uh, you'll be good at karaoke uh, because <laughs> because I think and and, and I can't um, I. I don't really remember what happened. I think I, I think I went to a bar and I saw karaoke and I was like, oh, um, how come, how come, how come Jorge hasn't already dragged me to karaoke? Because this is like totally, um, totally like his, um, his, his thing or something like that. And well, we were and playing I, karaoke revolution at home. Remember on the old oh, Xbox yeah, yeah. for the longest time. And then you're like, do, you should do it in, per, in real life. <laughs> like it's way different. And I think uh, we went to, what was it called? Uh, Manny's on 13th South, remember? Oh, you yeah, took yeah. Me the first time. And they had the peanut shells all over the floor, right? And there was like an unfinished wall <laughs> and a bunch of old timers there, you know, like regular school. And for some reason, I thought Careless Whispers would be the right first song <laughs> to <laughs> ruin. 
Yeah, and and um, karaoke. Well, well, you're uh, you're an expert at karaoke, and and I'm I'm still um, I'm still like um, 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 three or four on a scale of, of zero to a hundred. Um, <laughs> but um, um, but that's uh, like every song that I've thought. Oh yeah, I I um, this one should be easy. I always like totally fail at. <laughs> I remember when you used to sing Amazing Grace and you were just, you would hope that the KJ would let you sing the second verse. <laughs> <laughs> that was nuts, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, that was awesome. I've, I've been, I've been uh, basically like kicked off of karaoke. Uh, I think about five times so far. Well, not like kicked off, but, uh, but, uh, but, but they, sh they, they, they stopped the sh song short. Like oh yeah, let's let's give a round of applause for Joseph after <laughs> after the first ten seconds of his. Um... Oh me, thank you, Joseph. All right, <laughs> next up. <laughs> or, uh, or 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 the other thing they do is just completely mute my mic so that. Um, so oh, no that's rough. Yeah, uh, um, but then uh, but then I uh, that um, that makes me want to just um, sing really really loud. <laughs> turn it off it is off <laughs> turn it off <laughs> i can't turn it off anymore it's already off <laughs> turn off the lights <laughs> oh that was funny um so 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 i've been um i've been outside of salt lake for quite a while what's um what uh, what are the cool bars and are and are there any um, cool dive bars and and and, and what's the uh, what's the bar scene like or um, can, um, can you even go to a bar or is it or are they no. closed oh you can right now I mean and they're open till 10 we have a 10 p.m curfew okay now does that make sense to you I, it kind of doesn't to me I feel bad for you know business owners uh, but it seems like bars open during a pandemic doesn't really seem I mean we really should be supporting the businesses right and I mean, we have the money. We could kind of float them until this is over. Um, but yeah, so right now, yeah, I mean, I drive by my regular bars and there's people in there and I'm always like, wow, that's crazy. Um, playing pool with their masks on and stuff like, all right, this is like, and I can't risk it. You know, I've got like my mom and stuff I help out with. Uh, so um, I, I try to be extra careful. But, but honestly, before the pandemic, man like i said you've been out of it for a while it's changed so much there's so many like kind of more high-end bars with like fancy cocktails and um and stuff and it's and salt lake's always been weird right and like it's not a huge dance club city uh mm -hmm. but it's big on pubs and bars where people socialize um which is kind of what i like so yeah, you got a lot of the old standards still around, but a lot of new ones as well going around. Like we have an arcade bar that opened up a couple of years ago. That's that's pretty cool. But can you imagine they're like in the basement. Remember the old, uh, what was it called? The Manhattan that was in the uh, basement. Oh yeah. yeah, that's an arcade bar now uh, called Quarters. But during the pandemic, everyone's like, how can you stay socially distanced and everyone's touching the same controllers and stuff? And it was it was pretty rough it still is really rough for them they're trying to figure out what to do but i don't know yeah and and, and thailand um so, so so thailand kind of did the same uh, uh, the same thing but they but like it happened really really fast and they didn't uh, they, they didn't like unlock things until uh, until the virus was basically gone um so 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 thailand um, thailand did a did a curfew but it was a pretty extreme curfew um from from 10 a from 10 p.m. to like 4 a.m., then you couldn't walk outside on the street, um, like, um, and, and and they were finding uh, they were finding people like 50,000 baht, which um, which, uh, which I think um, I think uh, uh, 50,000 baht is like 1,500 dollars, but um, but but for for a Thai person that like for an average Thai person that's like six months salary. Um, and um, and 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 like um, like from from what I can tell, um, if you get a DUI, then it's twenty thousand. It's twenty thousand baht, 
like you pay you pay the police um, twenty thousand baht is kind of the, like the going rate, um, and so um, and so basically the curfew fine was two and a half times more than a DUI. Um, Whoa. So, so um, so 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 basically there uh, basically like there was nobody out on the street, and, and I um, I live in a um, I live in a place where it, it has like a really busy street where um, and it was just so bizarre like. Um, watching and not seeing like any cars um, except for um, except for like a um, like li like I think I think they uh, they exempted um, um, police cars and like emergency vehicles and like one other um, um, one other thing but but like everything everything was basically closed from 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. Um, and um, and and they just um, they completely um, they completely locked down a whole bunch of stuff, and they just very very gradually reopened. And bars were the very very last thing to reopen. Um, and I it makes sense actually. There was a study saying that like bars are actually the most dangerous social activity you could do during the pandemic, uh, or the highest risk, I guess. Um, and it's just uh, it's frustrating, and it's frustrating because I live downtown, right? Like, like smack dab right there next to like all the places I like to hang out like the urban which brings in a lot of cool like uh acts you know musical performers and stuff and it, i feel like covid is stolen this year of me living downtown from me like uh something <laughs> stuck in my little apartment like uh it's kind of frustrating but no well we'll see what happens they shipped out they're shipping out the first vaccines today so, oh really yeah, um mm -hmm. Is there any talk of vaccines? Because I know that there's, I heard that like some of the richer countries are hoarding up all the vaccine. And so I wonder, is, is, is there any talk of vaccines in Thailand? Um, so, so, so I think, I think every country is kind of tr um, developing their own vaccine or two. And, and like, like the U.S. has like um, 15 different, um, 15 different companies that are making vaccines, right? Um, uh, they put their money behind six, basically. Uh, and two yeah. have come out. Yeah, and I think um, I think Thailand has like one company that's making a vaccine, but I'm pretty sure that like, um, I'm pretty sure that another country is gonna like make a vaccine and then Thailand's gonna import it before the Thai vaccine is ready. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So yeah, that's um, that's kind of that's that's kind of interesting. Yeah, and it's weird, right? How you get lost in the way you look at the world, where you live, right? Because people here in the US, people are still like, "I'm not wearing a mask. It's my freedom." And it's like, dude, it's just temporary, man. Just chill out. It's not forever. <laughs> like, uh, but like, uh, you still see altercations in stores about wearing masks and stuff, and like, uh, it's nuts. Yeah, and um, and and it's interesting, Thailand, because because uh, there basically hasn't been any virus for like four four or five months now, and and still everyone's wearing masks, and uh, like like it's uh, well, well people uh, people are getting uh, people are kind of lazy now, like everyone's wearing masks, but like probably fifty percent of people like are. Um, but but there's really uh, there, there's really no reason to wear a mask um, in, um, like except for like practice um, pr uh, practice for the second wave like that's um, and and just like keeping everyone um, conscious of it because like like it's um, like, like the um, the virus is basically gone um, gone, um, gone here like or, or at least for now but but, but everyone's still wearing masks. And and seven um, seven elevens had um, seven elevens had a pretty cool policy. Um, they said they said you ha you can't come into the store unless you have a mask. But if you're not going to wear a mask, then you can like um, wait outside the store, and someone from so someone will get your stuff and deliver it to you. Yeah, curbside. There's a lot of curbside that's happening here. That's how some restaurants are surviving. But it's it's tough, man. Like a lot of businesses boarded up and things like that. It's like a kind of a downer. But so, what do you do for um, entertainment out there? I mean, is life kind of back to normal in a way? Um, yeah. So 
so so I haven't been um, I haven't been back to the movies, um, mostly because um, so so the movie the movie theaters are open, but before the pandemic, then uh, before the pandemic, then um, most of the movies were American movies, like like a, a movie theater that has like uh, twenty screens, then eighteen screens would be American movies. Well, um, sixteen screens would be American movies. Um, two or three screens would be um, would, would be like Korean or Japanese movies, and then one screen would be Thai movies. So, so at first I thought, oh, well, I, I, I want to learn Thai. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go see Thai movies. But, but the thing about Thai movies is like every single movie is a ghost story. And, and I'm like, like, I, I don't like horror movies, just, um, and, and, um, Thai ghosts are, um, Thai ghosts aren't like Casper the Friendly Ghost. Thai ghosts are like the um, kind of like chupacabra type, um, kind of ghosts, uh, just <laughs> like your, your your worst nightmare or whatever it is. Um, and why, why don't you like horror movies? Oh, I um, so so I just um, I just I just think about them too much, and then I can't sleep, and and I yeah. I, I have a I have a hard enough time um, sleeping already, and. And um, so, so, um, so, so yeah, that's probably um, that's probably it. And and I like uh, I like thinking about what I like thinking about. And just when I um, just I don't like um, I don't like just keep thinking about like a horror a horror movie that I saw uh, like two weeks ago. Like, like I saw um, I watched I Am Legend, and and that's. Um, but, um, like, like probably that doesn't bother most uh, most people. But like after I saw I Am Legend, then uh, then then the next the next day I woke up at like five a.m. just like and my mind was just racing, just um, it, it, and I had like this dream or whatever. And then it 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 took me like um, it took me like probably um, probably like a month to like get it out of my head. So so. So, so just I, um, that, um, that's probably the biggest reason that um, that they uh, they just mess with my head too much. No, and they do with me too. And I wonder how much it has to do with like our upbringings, right? Because we both had kind of sheltered upbringings, uh-huh. right? And so, like, but the kids around me—I grew up in South Central. You know, they they grew up on Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the Thirteenth, so. Even in grade school, they were like, oh, man, I just saw Nightmare on Elm Street last night, you know, and, and just hearing from my classmates this about the movies would freak me out. <laughs> I mean, uh, and it wasn't until I was older that I actually watched them. But yeah, they just impact me hardcore. And, and I don't know, like murder podcasts and like murder shows are like huge here. And they, they definitely, there's actually one funny show where they basically flip houses, people who lived in murder houses. So they give a whole little documentary on the murders that happened there. And then they go in and change the space. So it's more positive for the new owners. And it's like, it's weird, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, yeah, the bodies were buried right here, but we're going <laughs> to put a nice patio with a, with a fire pit. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> it's bizarro like uh weirdness yeah so uh how's work going and oh um it's uh it's good it's um i've been um i've been working on some websites um usually i do just finance software um but it's really uh, it's really cool i've been uh, working on websites with uh with 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 some um programmers in um in vietnam so so it's been a it's been a pretty cool thing. Oh, um, but but the thing I um, the thing I wanted to talk about is Nintendo, uh, because you've always been a huge huge Nintendo fan, and and I actually bought um, so so I bought a Switch, but it, uh, but I, I I bought it at like the exact wrong time, um, because uh, uh, well usually what usually what I do is I is i um because electronics are really really expensive in thailand um like like a corresponding uh, usually like um if if something costs a hundred dollars in the us then 
then like getting the exact same version is like $160 in Thailand. Oh, okay. And, um, and so, um, and so, so, so it was during the pandemic and I thought, or, or um, during the first part, um, um, pr um, probably like the week, um, um, uh, probably like the week when everyone bought a switch and it was sold out everywhere. But, uh, but, but I did, um, I did what I usually do, which is look on Amazon US for the price and then look on Thailand and, and I thought, oh, this is, this is really weird. It's cheaper in Thailand than it is in the US. And, and it, um, it didn't like dawn on me, oh, well, look at the price history. Um, uh, because I think, uh, I think it was probably like the day where, uh, where, where, where on, uh, where, where it was like $800 in, on Amazon. Um, or, or, or like the week, <laughs> uh, be, uh, because, uh, because I think, uh, I think like, if you look at the graph, then it like just totally spiked and then went, went back down to normal. So, um, so, so that's the reason why it was cheaper is because it was like eight hundred dollars in the U.S. and and, and I don't know about consoles. But, um, I, the, the last console I bought was a Wii, and I can't remember how much I paid for it. Um, so, so, so I thought, oh well, um, it, yeah, it's, it seems really cool. Um, it's eight hundred bucks in in the U.S. and like wh uh, whatever it was in Thailand, much much less than eight hundred dollars, but uh, but uh, but still like much much more than the actual price or. Uh, um, than what I should should have paid for it, but um, but, I mean, but 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 I didn't um, I didn't realize the, how much I overpaid for it um, um, for, for like two months later. I'm like, what? So the switch is three hundred dollars. That's um, that's not what I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> how much did you pay for it? Um, I um, I don't know. It was um, yeah yeah. I don't um, I don't know. It's, pro <laughs> it's probably it's probably too embarrassing to actually say. <laughs> have you used it much? Oh 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 yeah I um I I really like um, I really like the Switch and it's, and it's cool because it's just uh, it's it's really really portable um, like like I remember with the uh, with the Xbox then um, then 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 I liked um, I liked like um, taking um, taking it places but but you basically have to put it in a suitcase. Mm -hmm. uh, that just has your Xbox, and the cool thing about the Switch is the docking stations like this big, so so you can throw it in, um, you can throw it in a suitcase, and <coughs> you can throw it, you can throw it in a suitcase, and and hook it up to, uh, hook it up to like any TV or whatever, like like if you go on vacation, then uh, hook it up to the TV in your hotel room, and 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 and, and, and play, and and I don't really. I don't really play like handheld very much. I, I usually play it docked to the TV, but but it's really cool that like if I um, if I want to if I want to go in another room, I can just um, I can just pick it up and keep playing if I want to. And it's not like the latest and greatest in graphics, right? It's that's not its oh, goal. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So and and for for me, it's the latest and greatest because the last console I had was a Wii, and and I don't um, I don't really play um, I don't really play PC games. I've got a I've got a Linux. Well, I had a Chromebook, and and now I have a Linux computer, and my Linux computers. Uh, well, it was expensive in Thailand, but uh, but probably the equivalent of like a hundred and fifty dollar uh, laptop in the U.S. Whoa. Um, so, <laughs> So, um, so, um, so, um, so, so, so basically I don't really have processing power to do very much. So, so, um, so, so for me, the switch is really, really good. And, but, but a lot of times I'll read a review saying, oh, the graphics, the graphics on the switch port are terrible. And I think, oh, well, they, they were nice for me. I, um, just cause I don't, <laughs> I don't know better. <laughs> Yeah, man. It's like, yeah, I was hardcore, you know that, like Nintendo fanboy, like anti Xbox or anything else or PlayStation. It was like, I mean, fanboy. Uh, but man, now I don't know how I did it because I remember staying up to like four in the morning almost every day playing and then getting up at 630 to go to work. And now it feels like it's weird, like being locked down is it, my energy is like way lower, like I can just sleep for 12, 13 hours. I was like, uh, wow. So, 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 what happened? Um, you used to be a fanboy, and now, um, now, now you haven't even bought a switch. So, 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 what, uh, what happened to the Jorge that we all used to know and love? 
You know, it's it sounds cliche to say it's like life happened, right? Like you see a lot of people say that, but uh, kind of in a way, you know, and I think I've picked up other hobbies, you know, not that I'm any good at it, but I, I probably spend most of the time I would have spent on games now on fooling around with like my guitars. I became, you know, I got big on guitars and just, I was up to a dozen guitars at one point. I'm down to like six right now. Um, but my little tiny apartment, that's too many guitars. And especially considering how terrible I am at playing, but it's, it's still fun. Just, it's weird. Like I felt like, and I think the, a guitar hero was the beginning of the end for uh, <laughs> video performing. Because Guitar Hero, and then remember Rocksmith and going all in on Rocksmith with like the fog machine and the light machine in mm -hmm. the family. Uh, <laughs> I was telling my friend about that, how like these massive epic parties <laughs> with a bunch of people I didn't know in my house all, you know, singing Sp SpongeBob SquarePants songs on rock, rock band. Um, and I think at one point I was like, well, It'd be nice to actually learn real guitar instead of this plastic controller, right? Uh, and then Rocksmith happened, which was an evolution of all of that. And that was uh -huh. a game you played with an actual guitar. And so that prompted me to get a real guitar. And then, then my time started going off into that. So that's where I spend my time. Is that's my hobby, I guess you could say. So, so what was your what was your last uh, Nintendo console? The the Wii U or I didn't get the Wii U. No, the Wii was the last one. I got, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, I still kind of miss it sometimes. Uh, WarioWare, remember that game? Uh -huh. To me, that's like the greatest party game of all time. It's like <laughs> just that random silliness and, you know, get a couple of drinks in you and you're good to go for the night. <laughs> kind of <laughs> being silly and stuff. But yeah, that was it. And I bought, I mean, I bought an Xbox 360, uh, and that was, I think, my last console. That's uh, and and all because of all because of guitar. Yeah, Guitar Hero, definitely. But I was so, like, hey, Guitar Hero saved my kid's life too, because they were into really crappy music. Uh, uh -huh. And you know, I'll support them. You can like whatever you like, you know. But uh, Rocksmith kind of, I mean. Uh, you know, Guitar Hero and, and Rock Band kind of gave them a, a rock education in a way. Uh, and so they became much more well-rounded music lovers, which is, I was like, if nothing else came out of that, that's positive. It's uh, my kids have a much deeper appreciation for pop music and rock and everything, but <laughs> it's interesting. Cool, so so you've got a, you've got a band now, right? No. <laughs> No, I have, I have a couple of friends who want me to, who I, I've joked around like, hey, let me open for you. And they're like, dude, yeah, we'll do it, you know, next year. Um, so that was kind of my goal. Like, okay, I, if I can come up with three songs, I'll uh -huh. just open up a band at the Urban Downtown, little dive place. And I got a guitar instructor for a bit, uh, but things are tough with the pandemic and everything, you know. Um, but maybe I, I still flirt with the idea that, It'd be kind of fun just to do that, just to check it off my bucket list. So, so are you? Um, are, are these originals or are you, are they covers? I want to do originals. I think it'd be three songs. You know, when when nobody's there yet, <laughs> you know, before the other <laughs> one comes out. So, so <laughs> have you? Uh, it takes like 20, 30 minutes to set up and tune up and everything. I'm gonna play like ten minutes and then take another thirty minutes to take everything down. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm still coming up with names. So any suggestions you come up with would be you can forward them my way. Oh yeah, uh, and, and I think I um, I think I told you about uh, my suggestion for um, for um, for for a band uh, because I uh, so so um, Thailand um, Thailand has a lot of um, like minced um, minced or chopped meat dishes. Uh, like um, uh, um, ju um, just because um, and uh, just because they uh, uh, well, uh, Thai, um, Thai food's pretty uh, pretty cheap. So 
so so so they like um, take um, take whatever, um, um, cut it up really finely, mix it all together, um, add add a bunch of delicious Thai seasoning, and then no, no matter what the original thing was, it um, it tastes like pretty good. And uh, <laughs> so uh, so so I um, I I. I was describing uh, like over the years. I was describing um, Thai food and like various dishes, and and and, and I kept using the phrase lo, um, "low quality meat." Um, and and whenever uh, whenever I said that, this uh, this Jorge in my head um, uh, would always say, "Oh, that that would be a, a great band name." Um, so <laughs> I still do that, man. I mean, like to the point where I annoy people. Like, dude, get it? I'm like, but it is a good band name. <laughs> so, so, um, um, so, so anyway, if you're um, if you're looking for suggestions, then my uh, my suggestion is low quality meat. <laughs> low quality meat. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have pita on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. Are are people vegetarian out there? Are like, is there any like militant vegetarians? Or vegans? Um. So, so, uh, the. The only uh, the the only like vegetarians that are even close to that category are people that think that meat is bad for their health. Um, so 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 um, so 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 there really aren't very many vegetarians. Like um, like one of the things when, when I was vegetarian, I I loved going to hamburger places because in the U.S. pretty much every burger place ha also has a veggie patty. Um, and, um, and in Thailand, um, <clears throat> in Thailand, in Thailand and like most, uh, most of Asia, then, um, then burger places don't have, um, uh, vegetarian, um, patties. So, so, um, so, so, so I kept, uh, well, when I moved to Thailand, I was, I was vegetarian and then I stopped like, um, I stopped like eight months, um, eight months in. Um, but but my first eight months, I <clears throat> I kept thinking, oh, this is a burger place. You should have a vegetarian patty. Um, You're going in there as a form of protest. <laughs> well, uh, well, well, uh, yeah. And then and then all I ate was the fries or whatever. But <laughs> so you but, liked going because they wouldn't have an option for you. Uh, what's that? You liked going because they would not have an option for you. Oh um, no 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 I um, I would just like try different um, um, different burger places, and one um, one place uh, one place just gave me a bun with some vegetables on it like vegetables and ketchup, <laughs> and it was um, and, and not uh, not uh, not like uh, not like a thick thing of vegetables just like like lettuce and some um, cucumbers uh, like. like <laughs> Like really thinly sliced cucumbers, so um, so so it was just like bizarre. Like, oh well, um, this is a twenty calorie sandwich. So now I need to, uh, now after my meal, I need to eat another meal. Um, so um, so so in um, in in Thailand, then a lot of people are vegetarian, like just one day a, um, one day a week. But um, but but like a friend of mine who's vegetarian, I um, I I, I um, her, uh, her day is like Wednesday or Thursday or whatever, and so so, so like on a on on a Thursday, I, I I walked by and I saw her eating fish, and I was like, um, I thought you're vegetarian today, and she's like, oh yeah, I'm I am eating vegetarian. Um, so 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 the. Um, uh, uh, vegetarian uh, vegetarianism in Thailand is um, isn't um, or 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 is just is just a lot lot looser than um, than vegetarianism is in um, in the states. So so interestingly, they have a vegetarian festival um, for like three days where people are supposed to eat vegetarian for three days, but um, and 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 during that month, then a lot of a lot of stores will have like a vegetarian um, a vegetarian special. Oh oh, and the, the interesting thing about Thai food um, with, and Thai Thai vegetarian food is um, you know how Thai food is just like this total explosion of flavors in your mouth. 
Mm -hmm. And and it's interesting because every single Thai dish is just this total explosion of flavors in your mouth. And and you know how sometimes uh, um, sometimes you just want something like plain. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. Um, like like you don't um, you don't want you don't want something just in, intense. You just want like a slice of bread or um, I um, I don't know what uh, or, or or like a, a cracker or. Uh, I'm Mexican, so I don't think I ever experienced that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, okay. I put hot sauce on everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, and so, so that's, um, so, so, so with Thai people, then, then like every single one, uh, every single, every single thing of their food is just so like flavor explosion. And, um, and so with vegetarian, with vegetarian food, the, uh, with, with vegetarian food, it, it ends up being like way, way too salty and way too, um, just, just way, way too in, intense. Like, like Thailand doesn't have like regular vegetarian food. Um, <laughs> um, because be, uh, oh, 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 and then, and, and, and with Thai, with Thai vegetarian, there, there are like two or three spices that you can't, you can't put in. Um, so, 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 so Thai vegetarian is more like religious based. And so, and so they say. Uh, so with Thai vegetarian, there's there's no meat and no, um, like like I think ginger is one of the things you can't put in, or, or, or no, it's probably not ginger. It's um, but 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 anyway, um, uh, like like with Thai vegetarian, you, you you can't put in certain spices. And so, so 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 what uh, what they try to what, what they try and do is say, okay, well we can't put in these spices, so we're going to add these other things to make it just just this huge um, flavor explosion. And so. Um, and so, so, so there was a vegetarian restaurant in the in the mall, um, in the um, in the mall by my work, and um, and I was super excited because usually I have to usually have to go to the tourist areas to get vegetarian food, and um, or, or 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 there's one uh, uh, there's one like uh, vegetarian food court like um, um, over by the weekend market like um, kind of on on the way out of town, but not but not not by my not by my work. So, so I was super excited and I, and I went to the vegetarian place. It was just way, way, just insanely salty. And, and I thought, oh, may, uh, maybe I got, to, maybe I got a bad dish and I tried again. And, and, and again, just like way, way too many, just intense, weird flavors. Um, and, uh, and then I thought, oh, well, maybe it's a bad week. And then tried to, tried a month later. And it was uh, just really, really, really hard to eat. So, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, they don't um, like like because uh, be, because Thai food is just so flavorful, and Thai people just want that all of the time. Um, and 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 there's a uh, there's a dish called there's a dish they call joke. It's um, um, you, you know what kanji is. Um, I don't think it's, so. Okay, so uh, so so kanji is uh, like Chinese style boiled rice. Um, so, so, so you boil rice and then you put in like, uh, like, like some meat and some vegetables and it's, it's usually like a breakfast meal in, in China, like China and Taiwan. And, and um, Thai, um, Thai's version of that is, is called joke. And, um, and, and Thai people all say, oh, well, joke, um, joke is basically, uh, th th there's a word called jut. Uh, um, um, that, um, that's the Thai word and jut means like tasteless. So, so, um, so, so, so a couple times I've ordered joke and, um, and, um, uh, expecting, expecting it to be tasteless, but, but because it's like tasteless, they're, uh, um, they do the, the same thing with vegetarian stuff. They just put in like stuff that's way, way too, too <laughs> intense. Uh, like, like, you know how, um, you, you know, lemongrass, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and, um, and, and so like usually, uh, uh, usually in a dish like, 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 like um, um, dom yam, um, 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 tom yum, um, then, then, then you eat everything except for the lemongrass and the ginger. Um, but, um, but, but, but in, um, it, it, it uh, um, and, and for me, like lemongrass is just super, super intense. So, um, 
but um, but um, but in joke they basically like um, deep, deep fry lemongrass and then and then cut it up and then put just this um, and mix it all together and so so, wow. so a couple of times I've, a couple of times I've ordered um, joke just hoping for um, hope, um, hoping for a, a a break from just the intense Thai flavors all the time and and I and and I get like. A, a break from the regular intense type flavors, but um, but just <laughs> <laughs> but but a much much worse beast than um, <laughs> that, um, he was running away from. No special orders in Thailand. You can't say like hold the lemongrass. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, so, so it's interesting, especially with especially with spicy, because um, and and I don't know um, I don't know why it is, but like when I uh, when I eat spicy food, then I start sweating, and may, uh, maybe it's because I don't have hair, but um, <laughs> but um, but, um, but and, and Thai people all think it's really really funny, um, and and they think that I'm super uncomfortable, like like when I'm sweating. Um, so, so, so they'll they'll like blow a fan, like 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 rearrange a fan, and like like blow it on me, and I and I. I hate fans blowing in my face. So, <laughs> are they trying to shoo you away? Uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, that, uh, that's that's totally not Thai culture. Thai, um, Thai culture is more just um, just, uh, just saying, oh well. Um, how, how do we make um, uh, this guy? Uh, this guy's different from us, a different culture, but we want to make him comfortable. So, how how do we make him comfortable? Nice. Um, so, so, so that's um, that's actually pretty cool because, like, like, uh, like you know how um, you, you know how if someone doesn't speak English in 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 America, then then someone would be like, "Hey, this is effing America. You go back to your blah, blah, blah. And, um, and and you don't have to walk too far before you find someone with that attitude. In um, yeah. but but in Thailand, um, in Thailand, like I've I've talked to like a whole bunch of people and like tried to bring out oh do you um I know um, I know you don't I know you don't show that attitude on the outside but on the inside are you are you like secretly feeling that way and like 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 just Thai people aren't aren't that way at all they're like oh well he's a different culture he doesn't understand our culture so that's just kind of how it is and wow like, what um, that's I know. How it is. you're okay with that and you're not like get the effing back to <laughs> <laughs> uh, come back to where you came from oh my gosh no people get like attacked just for talking spanish among like i've gotten dirty looks for talking spanish with my mom at the store it's like like oh so stupid like <laughs> well, i don't know what they're talking about me i'm like trust me i didn't even notice you <laughs> <laughs> you're not that important I'm like uh it's very kind of self-centered culture i know it sucks sometimes but all right. Well, I think I need to make myself some breakfast before I fall asleep here. Just well, um, cool. Thanks for um, th uh, thanks for uh, thanks for doing this, and it's it's really cool talking to you. And um, we should do it again, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. So we'll uh, it'll be our little podcast, cool. video cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Dude. Hey, have a good morning. <laughs> yeah, uh, morning, evening, uh, whatever time it is. Uh, thanks, <laughs> All right, take care. Bye. Bye.